Are you a cheat? When the subject of tracing comes up, it splits opinion totally. Many will say you cannot trace, it is cheating. You need to learn how to draw. I don't feel like that at all. Um, and I'll explain why as best I can. I admit there are times when we need to learn to draw. In my drawing class, for example, that's where we learn to draw in two hours. And it's all about drawing techniques and measuring and, and all of the technicalities around drawing. That's what it's for. Tracing is not allowed in my drawing class. However, if you're a beginner in a watercolour class and it's quite a complicated scene or uh, still life that we're draw painting, that we're working from, I would much rather someone trace a photocopy of that picture, that reference, and be able to learn how to paint, which is what the lesson is about, than spend the whole of the two hours stressing about not getting the drawing right. But they're not there for the drawing, they're there for the painting. Tracing has its place. For example, way, way back in the 15th century, in his book, The Craftsman's Handbook, by Cinino d'Andrea Cinini, which is one of the first sort of how-to art books ever written. It actually encourages tracing, and it says that if you admire a certain artist or piece of work, to trace it, to learn how they did it, to emulate it. So you'll be as good as them one day. It even tells you how to make your own tracing paper out of paper and linseed oil. I've tried it, by the way, and it makes the best tracing paper I've ever used. So tracing wasn't considered cheating back in the 15th century. And then with the introduction of lenses, artists were well away and they were using lenses to reflect images and trace outlines. Rumour is around that Caravaggio traced and Canaletto, we know, traced all of his beautiful Venetian landscapes, all traced. Uh, Vermeer, possibly traced, almost definitely traced. There's a wonderful book by David Hockney called The Secret Knowledge. It's a huge weighty tome of a book and it ex explains his theories about artists using lenses to trace their work. Why would a master like da Vinci, who possibly traced, and Michelangelo, who also possibly traced, use lenses. Why would they trace when they're skillful? Art back then is exactly the same as art today. Jobbing artists need a fast turnaround of work. People aren't willing to wait and they weren't willing to wait. So by using tracing, it didn't diminish that they couldn't draw. They could really well, but it just reduced the time it took. So whilst I'm an advocate of drawing and learning to draw, there are times when you need to reduce that time. If I'm doing a commission and somebody wants it within three or four weeks, I haven't got the time to spend accurately drawing everything out because that could take three to four weeks until I'm happy with it. But a quick little dot for where proportions are or um, sizes are, saves me weeks. It's a bit like artists using an overhead projector to uh, project an image, even of their own drawing. It didn't just stop with the invention of lenses. You've got um, camera obscurers, the big boxed pieces with lenses that you look down and wherever you aim it at, it projects the image onto it. They're quite large and that's how Canaletto worked. He would have uh, the Venetian landscape ahead of him, uh, a camera obscura, sketch a little bit, 
move it over, new piece of paper, sketch more, move it over, sketch more. And then his students would then trace and transfer those sketches onto his canvas, ready for him to paint. It's not cheating. This little gadget behind me is a modern version of a Victorian design called a camera lucida. Now how that works is you look down the top and whatever is in front of it, here we've got a little wooden mannequin, but whatever is in front of it is projected on the screen. You can't see it projected only when you look down. So you could do a portrait, uh, whoever was sitting in front of you, you'd look down there and you would easily um, see what's in front of you. If you dr make the lighting, lighting more dramatic, very, very dark with a spotlight, it will show up beautifully. These are great because they're portable. I can attach them to any table or anywhere. If I'm out in the street on a sunny day like today, absolutely perfect to see what's around. Artists were scared about using them because they thought they'd be ridiculed or thought of not to be a true artist. So in the Victorian age, camera lucidas were designed to fold down and look like the spine of a book on a shelf. We know this because we found them in art studios. You can make your own projector as well using a bathroom mirror. You know the bathroom mirror where it's got two sides? You've got the side that sees normal and then you've got the scary side, the magnified side. Now that magnified side is slightly concave and a concave mirror is perfect on a sunny day because what you do is you angle the mirror out of your window, have a piece of white paper to the side and then by moving the mirror further away or closer to it, you gain the focus and it will project whatever is outside in colour, upside down on your paper for you to trace. That's been around for at least 600 years. So are you a cheat if you trace? You're not. You're actually just following in the footsteps of the great masters like Caravaggio, Canaletto, Michelangelo, Da Vinci, Vermeer, you name it. They all used whatever technology was to hand to help them speed up their work. Am I saying you should never learn to draw properly? Not at all. You need to learn your drawing skills because that will enhance everything that you do and it will give you more confidence. The tracing side will speed things up and... It will help you get more confidence in your pencil work. So don't use it as an excuse. Don't say, Barry said I can just cheat. It's not cheating. But Barry said I should just trace. You can trace, but where drawing comes in, just learn to draw properly. Use the tracing as an aid, not as a replacement. I hope you found that interesting.